great. So congratulations. This film is phenomenal and I can't wait for the next part. Um, what I love about this story and your characters is that it's different levels of honour in war. And I wanted to start with you, with Gunnar, because he makes a dreadful mistake at the beginning and yeah. the film follows how he tries to regain his honour yes. through, uh, yeah. through the war and the rebellion. I completely agree. I thought that... that uh, that was one of the main motivators for uh, for my character in part one, to redeem himself from that mm -hmm. terrible miscalculation yeah, in, in him. So, but that's that's very satisfying, of course, because it means he gets to start here and hopefully end somewhere else. Absolutely. Now you're rooting for him. You're like, no, and now he's um, and then playing a general blood axe. What a name. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> General Commander. I mean, we all go. We go by a lot of names. Uh, he's one of the the co leaders of the Blood Axe uh, Insurgency, uh, and you know, it's it's very much like uh, Gunner's story and just about every other character. It is about redemption. You know, when uh, Balisarius and the Imperium take over and start threatening the freedom, the justice, the equality of all the other planets in the universe, the Blood Axes uh, they rebel. You know, they start. They start. What, uh, at least when we start this film, what is one of the first acts of defiance against uh, the Imperium. And, you know, their huge thing is bring everyone in that wants to be a part of it. You know, we're not going to twist, we're not going to force your hand. Uh, it's not get down with us or get, or, you know, die. They're not, they're, they're not those kind of people. They're liberators. And uh, they're liberators of the galaxy uh, seeking like-minded individuals to fight for the cause. Absolutely amazing. And um, Milius is such a great character because they really like follow Blood Axe through thick and thin. And how is it developing that relationship and with Ray? And... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very natural. I'll say that. Um, from the first day I met Ray, he was so welcoming and reassuring and grounding. And um, I really did see him as a mentor figure on set. So being able to develop that in the film was, you know, didn't take a whole lot of work from there. Amazing. And what I love about this world is that it feels very imbued in our own history and our own different cultures, especially with like Gunnar's world, it's very Viking Absolutely. Um, kind of thing. And was there any like research that you guys did on like the history and, and the cultures that Zack Snyder has developed? Um, well, you just feel it. You know, there's this combination between all these sci-fi worlds that he creates, and then there's also this low-tech that is very tangible and uh, steampunky aspect to it, uh, which may, which somehow lets you relate to it. I, I remember like one of my favorite scenes early on in the shoot was um, the uh, the saloon. You remember that scene where where we meet uh, Kai, Charlie uh, Charlie Hunnam's character, for the first time, and it. Felt, it really reminded me of being in, I've, I've been to Kyoto once, and it felt like stepping into some really cool bar in Japan. So very like, you know, like worldly. And at the same time, there were all these sort of like very sci-fi elements and doors were floating and, you know. Yeah, that's dope, yeah. I, just being able to see the different cultural experiences because you know when you create a universe it, it wouldn't make sense for there to be this homogenized universal culture you need different people from different planets different races of aliens different uh, accents different ways of life otherwise it just doesn't ring true it doesn't even, it wouldn't even ring true to where we're at on our planet let alone the entire universe right uh, so i think zach shay and kurt did a phenomenal job and i mean really everyone across the board i think the costume uh, the costume department the props design everyone really had to really dig into what made each place unique and and start and go from there yeah, amazing. And talking about props, I mean, working with some of the battle guns and the sequences, how is it working in the battle sequences with these prop guns? Heavy. Yeah. <laughs> very heavy. Yeah. But very, I mean, it was so, the, the way they were built, you know, we had like three or four, four versions of every prop weapon, mm -hmm. uh, some, some even with like... Um, like um, uh, how would you call it? like a flashlight kind of thing or a beam on it mm -hmm. mounted so when you pull the trigger it would give a flash or something and uh, you know it was sort of hard to imagine how that was going to look mm -hmm. once uh, they put it all together in, in post but it looks so amazing it yeah. really does well yeah. thank you so much for talking to me today I can't wait for part two I'm so immersed in this world already beautiful <laughs> ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys <laughs>
<laughs> hey, you guys. Hey, hey, hey. That's what they all say. Hey, you guys.